Hi, I'm your host, I'm Anya. Um, thanks to Chester for hosting. Thanks to GoPro. So tonight, we have some really wonderful speakers for you. We've got some powerhouses. The meetup will be coming up in March. So check out the meetup page for that. There's a couple of great talks on AutoML and application in biology. So just before I introduce our awesome speakers tonight, I just want to um, say thanks to GoPro. And um, I think they will have a few words for you. Just one sec. Okay, here's Chester. Welcome, welcome. You know, I'm changing my head to be, uh, in, besides I'm an organizer, I'm also work at GoPro. So I'll be, today I'm just a, on behalf of GoPro, welcome you. So I'd like to say a few words about GoPro. I mean, or most of you already know GoPro. So basically, we want to tell you about, uh, we have a few teams hiring people. So uh, one is in our cloud team. There are two positions, uh, full-time, uh, the full-stack software engineer, as well as the media team has a software engineer. Uh, in my teams, we also have hiring data engineers. So if you're looking for uh, working on data infrastructures, ETLs, uh, some data analytics, uh, you can uh, talk to me afterwards. So with that, back to Anya. Awesome, thanks, Chester. I'm curious, how many, are there any infrastructure people in the audience? Am I the only one? Awesome, okay, talk to me after. Awesome. Okay, so, so without further ado, let me introduce Sam Tsai from Facebook. He's gonna give us our first talk. Sam is really well respected in his field before he came into the industry field. He was super successful at Stanford with his PhD and has been cited over 3,000 times, which is pretty awesome. So Sam, thank you for coming here. Sure. Hi. This is uh, good. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. Um, um, my name is Sam Tai. I'm an applied research scientist uh, working in Mobile Vision Group in uh, Facebook. Our team focuses on uh, efficient deep learning solutions for computer vision applications. So I'm um, doing this talk on efficient deep learning for computer vision on mobile devices. So um, today we'll talk about a few different topics. I'll show a few um, examples of AR on mobile devices. And then um, since we're actually running things on the mobile devices, we need to be able to um, make the models that can actually run efficiently. And you know, how do we do that? We try to make them efficient. Another way to do this is actually doing automatic search. And finally, I'll show um, uh, open source version of Mass Garcia to go, which is, um, we thought if we had time, um, and talk about uh, how we made it, uh, made it fast. So, um, so here is the body tracking work. So you can see the person is trying to move around and um, butterflies are attached to his body. So what's happening in the back, on the phone itself is that you're run, we're running a, a person key point detection model where the key point is like the joints of the body, the, the elbows, the wrists, the shoulders, the hips. Uh, with these, uh, like a skeleton, you can then append different uh, graphical effects onto the, the person as, as you see, we're seeing a little bit on the phone right there. Um, this is another week. Oh, 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 hey, Portal, call Lauren. Oh. Wait, it's moving. And if I go over there, camera phone, you, you can see up here, right? Yeah. Run past it like quick and back. Rinse it in the sink. Now, do you have a knife? Oh, Kiara. <laughs> a score developed in the Renaissance. released last year. Uh, it has some smart intelligence built into it. As you've seen in the uh, demos right there where you, people are trying to run around to see that you can, the, the camera can still follow the person. So what's happening in, inside is actually there's also a person detection model trying to figure out where the person is, finding out his body pose. And then with that, you can actually follow the person around. So um, you don't have to worry about standing always in front of the video camera video conference uh, device and still be able to walk around and still talk to the person across from the uh, across the video connection uh, seamlessly. Um, this is another uh, fun thing we did. This is called Instagram Lead Tags. Well, the 
this is uh, for Instagram. So, have you used a lot of uh, QR codes? I know that a lot of uh, different uh, uh, communication um, chats or apps use this to connect, uh, connect with different people. And people can use that to, um, you don't need to type in the other people's IDs. Um, Instagram actually didn't have that feature uh, for a long time. But however, when they looked at this problem, they wanted to be a little bit more open. Right? Because in Instagram, you can actually just search for usernames. So instead of using like a machine learning, machine readable code only, they came up with approach just doing like a hu human readable code while machine can also read it. So we came up with this work on Instagram name tags. What's running in the behind is also a machine learning algorithm that does um, uh, text detection and logo detection, and then using optical character recognition to recognize the text. So a lot of these actually all run on the mobile device. Sorry, so how do we actually make mo efficient models that are efficient? Uh, there's a lot of things that, there's a lot of challenges um, to, 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 to be able to run on, uh, on the device. You need to, get, you need to um, tackle several different things. Sometimes you'll need higher accuracy, this is mostly because if you are doing uh, AR effect, um, you want higher accuracy because if it's not accurate, you'll see that there's actually jagginess, so it's not a really good uh, experience. You definitely would want faster speed for uh, the reason that you want to run real time. Um, but for mobile devices, typically the RAM is much smaller than compared to like GPU devices. So you want also the memory footprint to be small, where the memory footprint is that on when you're actually running the device, I'm sorry, running the inference, you want this, uh, the model, the model weights, the model act activations to be small. Also, you want the, uh, the, the packaged uh, map model also to be small, where the pa packaged model may be um, transported over the network or actually is bundled in the binary. So you all also want those to be small. So um, to just give a sense of like uh, the actually the um, complexity of different models over that's developed over the years, Shown here is a graph of all the all the pretty popular uh, networks that's been that's been released. Uh, the, on the top is the AlexNet, which is um, which was one of the first models that revolutionized deep learning. Um, it was uh, it was published in 2012 and became sort of like the uh, ImageNet be benchmark or reference that people would cite. Um, this one um, actually had a very short, didn't have too much of that. Um, it was actually not a too big of a model. Uh, BGD came out later, uh, showing that if you just put in more weights, uh, you can actually train a bit much better, gaining a much better accuracy. So you can see that it actually improves the rec ac ac recognition accuracy. Um, later on, there's some works like the Google Lonet, ResNet. Instead of um, using larger nets, uh, they actually looked into trying to um, increase the depth of the network to try to improve the performance. Google Internet was the first one that actually be, was able to train more than um, a few ten, tens of uh, layers. Resident on the other hand um, figured out a way to train based on residuals. With that, they can actually train like 32, 50, and I've seen there's been works on training with 100 and up to 152 layers. So these are like the larger models that typically that can't run on mobile devices. On, 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 on GPUs, it's also quite heavy as well. So people have started looking to using smaller models. Screensnet was one of the earlier ones that actually was able to uh, uh, use only um, like 500k bytes to, to, um, to run the inference. Uh, with that, it still achieves the same performance as the Alex model, but still not getting to the same accuracy as uh, VGG Google with and ResNet. MobileNet was the uh, work that, that was done by Google. And it was a pretty efficient model. You can see that it uses only a, a mega flop size of um, about only 500 me mega flops, but it achieved a uh, top on accuracy that's similar to VGG. You have also different flavors of MobileNet, uh, reducing it to um, just um, almost a fourth of its size. With, this, with sacrificing some, some accuracy. ShuffleNet is another flavor of um, uh, efficient model that was developed um, um, from another company. So 
these are different types of networks. You can see that there's a trend. Um, these were actually proposed, I think, in just two years ago. These was much earlier. So there's a trend to actually try to make all these models efficient so that they can run on, um, run on GPUs faster or even like mobile devices. But how do we actually make these models efficient? <coughs> well, um, one, one, one simple way to actually reduce these, um, to make these models more efficient is by pruning. Um, in these networks, um, there's actually a lot of weights um, that may not need actually, well, it may not be that important. So if you can actually figure out like the different weights, different information, and figure out the ones that that's important, you can then try to prune these out. You typically can uh, use these prune approach but to prune the weights by sometimes up to nine times, between three and nine times based on the model performance. Um, you can also then do quantization, where uh, you quantize the represent representation of the weights. Uh, to just give an example, shown here is a kernel size, uh, a say a convolutional kernel of four by four. Typically, we only have a convolutional of odd, so this is just for um, illustration. Uh, once we have these uh, kernels, we can do k-means clustering to um, cluster them into different indices. Um, the colors show the indices and the number of uh, the number show numbers here show the index. So you can actually just repre represent the whole original weights by using the cluster centers and the centroids. However, if you just you, if you just use these directly, you'll find that because you did some quantization, your accuracy actually drops quite a bit. So you need to do some sort of fine tuning. And um, the way to do fine tuning is that you do um, you also run the same network. You figure out the gradient update rates. And then, because you know the assignments of these different indices, you can as associate them together, and then you do uh, an average-based weighting to update the weights again. So typically, you can, when you use this approach, you can regain the losses that's due to quantization. Um, shown here is a, a, a graph of, if you use a pruning and quantization to quantize a model, um, this is a model that's uh, already pretty efficient. This is a small model with a, a, model, size, a model size of just around 1.8 megabytes. Um, this one has an accuracy of um, 40 or 50 something. So if you do pruning and pruning print from the original size to the sparse size, you can actually get it around with by pruning away 63% of the parameters. And if you represent the centroids by using just eight bits, you can reduce it to probably just 300 k bytes. From so from from the original size to the to eight bits, it's reduced by almost eight times. If you notice here, you can actually al almost get away with also five bits as well if you can allow your application to do that. So pruning and quantization is an uh, efficient way to actually reduce the model size. Um, as a byproduct of pruning, though, you can actually also improve the accuracy. Um, if you do what, once you do the first training using the dense network, you do uh, pruning to reduce it to a sparse network. You then, then, when you train on this, you force the network to learn specific items. But sometimes there are still losses in particular uh, information. So another way to improve on those is just repopulate the, the network again, and then you train again. This actually is an efficient way to actually improve performance as well. Um, on Google and Net, we found that this actually improves the performance by, um, so this, this is split, so originally we were showing the accuracy, this one's actually showing the error, so with the Google Net, using the dense, uh, dense sparse dense approach, you can reduce the error by almost 1.1 1, 1 .1 times. BGG Edit actually get a, got a great boost, it increased the, increased, in, decreased the error by four times, be, beating Google and Net. Uh, ResNet and ResNet, uh, ResNet 18, ResNet 50, uh, each got about 1.2% uh, uh, error reduction. So these are not uh, not small, uh, trivial uh, improvements. So using this approach, you can do you can improve the you can improve the tra uh, training accuracy. Um, so we talked a little about uh, quantization of the weights, um, improving the training. But another side of the problem is actually activation. So when you do, um, when you do the inference, uh, the in input image size is actually much, is pretty large. For a given image, it might be something like 200 by 
224 by 224, and then you pass it in through the network, the channel size gets larger, so it actually, came, it actually is a large, it, it's a large portion of the memory use. Memory use. So how do you actually quantize the act activations? Um, if you look here, what we've shown here is the activation and weight distributions of the model. Um, weights you can quantize using uh, the, the, the quantization approaches we mentioned. Uh, the activations, can, you can also do uh, linear quantization. But if you just do linear quantization um, and you train the network, sometimes it's not, the performance is not, it's not that well. So what we found is that um, you can use a value-aware quantization to actually improve the performance. So what does that mean? Uh, instead of quantizing the activations directly, you only quantize the activations up to a certain level. So with these, um, these uh, activations are represented using uh, three bits, for example, and the rest you represent as um, full, full, full scale, uh, full floating points, um, full, full 32 bits floating point uh, representation. Because um, the higher the waste, it's simply that it's more information. So with that, you can actually be able to retain more information where you're actually doing the training. Um, using this approach, you can actually reduce the activation weights quite, quite a bit. You can even do on-device training with this approach. For example, SqueezeNet, um, the original model size was only just a, a, a few hundred K bytes, but the activations is actually 1.5 gigabytes. If you use activation uh, quantization, you can reduce that to just 640 megabytes. Mobile net, similar, same, similar uh, situation. Uh, the activation set memory use is around 7.3. If you reduce it with the uh, activation quantization, you can reduce it to 1.1. ResNet also from 9 gigabytes to 1.52. You notice that uh, the, the line on the top is actually the image net accuracy. You see that there's almost no drop in, um, in when you're actually doing this quantization. All right, um, that's a quick uh, introduction of uh, different techniques. Um, now we'll dive into a little bit more, talk, talk, talk a little bit more about um, uh, architecture search. So, all the previous method I mentioned is actually just um, modifying the model as it is, quantizing the uh, quantizing the weights, quantizing quantizing the architectures. Um, this is only one part of the one, one part of the work. If we can actually all get more efficient models, then that this is actually an even better approach. Getting efficient models previously has been done mostly through human human understanding. So, given the ways we spend more time looking at it and see how it can improve. So, moving from AlexNet to VGGNet using higher parameters, VGG to GoogleNet with uh, deeper networks, from GoogleNet to ResNet, even deeper networks. There's a lot more work actually also like combining different um, different uh, layers from different parts of the network to go deeper. But all these spend, would, would require a lot of time. So automatic neurologic search deals with problem actually, instead of doing human-based um, search, you use, a, you use computers to help you uh, find better networks. So you use machine learning to search for machine learning architectures. Well, um, on this end, we have done two works uh, to, to um, work towards this goal. One is a model adaptation framework. Um, so what is a model adaptation framework? Um, so for, for different uh, mobile devices, typically uh, the hardware would actually um, be different. Each, each different type of hardware can have different performances. Um, so convolutional kernels or decisions or libraries, these would actually all result in different uh, latency. Sometimes, um, if a smaller, smaller kernel size versus a large kernel size, if the memory footprint is the same, it could actually run at the same speed. So sometimes it might be good to actually choose a 5x5 five five kernel over 3x3, three three, which you might need to get a better performance. So how do we do that? Well, if you just look at a whole network, sometimes there's, there's a, a whole bunch of layers, and you have all these uh, parameters inside, 
um, the number of uh, search states you have to look through into is quite large. Just just give an example, like if you search for a kernel size is three by three, five by five, or even seven by seven, uh, that's three. You might have to uh, consider sometimes, um, uh, like if you use a mobile mobile net model, there's expansion ratio. So if there's a there's expansion ratio that could that could have probably six six other choices. You also have like a channel number of channels within each layer that can actually uh, have more than tens. So you have like 20, 20 different op options that you can choose from inside each layer, of t and you have 10 layers, that would be 20 to the 10 times. So the search space is pretty large. You need to search through that search space to find efficient models. <coughs> if you do this just, uh, just to, through a brute force approach, that won't actually work. To do this efficiently, what we did is that we built a um, method to actually try to uh, do an efficient evolutional search. We try to estimate the accuracy. Uh, this can be done by um, using the base network and doing a random sampling of the, of the, of the search space and using uh, Gaussian process and Bayesian optimization to try to, op to estimate the accuracy. Once that, you can actually do, um, get, a good, uh, get a sense of where you, which direction you need to go. On the latency side, since most operations are dependent on hardware, we can sim simply just run pre-test them using different kernels, different, uh, different sizes, different channels, using that to build an uh, operator latency lookup table. Once you have these operation latency lookup table, then you can have a prediction, a, pr a latency predictor. Similarly, similar fashion, you can use that to also predict for energy as well. So with accuracy prediction, latency prediction, and energy prediction, we can then uh, create efficient models that's accuracy, latency, and energy aware. Um, the name we call this attention framework is called uh, CamNet, which, uh, which comes from Chameleon Net. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a short a result of, um, of our adaptation results. Um, there's a lot on the curve, so I'll go through them um, from top to bottom. On the top is MobileNet uh, V2. You can see that the, the, uh, on behind it shows that it's 224, which means the input resolution. Typically, if you want to uh, speed up your network, there's two options. One is to change the input size to a smaller size. The other is to try to scale the channels that's, with, that's used within the, within the network. So the curve you see with the MobileNet V2, which is the blue one, this one is, this curve is traced by changing the channel size, uh, downscaling them. Um, but you can, you can see that if you just change the resolution at, uh, to say 192, you get a performance when compared to actually scaling the channel size. So um, people try to find different ways to try to find a better, better performance and try to curve out like a better, better curve on top. Um, MobileNet has these performances. Um, and NASNet, which is also a uh, network architecture search uh, method, uh, has a performance actually shown here, also pretty good. Uh, ShelfNet is another flavor of, um, of a vision model that has a performance right, I think, through here. And CabNet is our, ours. So because we are, har we are hardware aware and latency aware, we are able to find out the ones that, are, that works best for Samsung S8. And then we can actually get, get a performance that um, outperforms all the others. If we look at just the last point where you have focus on just four millisecond, we have much uh, much higher uh, accuracy. Um, CPU is one can, one uh, situation for the for the hardware. We can also also run it on the DSP device. If you did use DSP, typically you have a better kernel to run uh, the convolution, so you get a little bit better performance compared to the CPU. Um, you can see that, uh, for example, under the same latency constraints at 30 millisecond, it again gains about a 1.3% uh, uh, accuracy program, uh, improvement. At a, lar at, a, uh, at a lower end of 60, at uh, 4 millisecond, it gets uh, almost a 4% improvement. So I talked about um, so all these methods are actually um, still based on looking at uh, adjusting, the, um, adjusting the parameters of a given architecture. But 
You can actually also do um, architecture search directly. So when you talk about architecture search, it would be looking like looking at something like um, uh, MobileNet is using alerted residuals um, to help with their with their network. ShuffleNet is using a group convolution and doing shuffle across different layers. Um, all these can be actually put as a single element within the search space that you can actually search for. Um, traditionally, well, not traditionally, in the past few years, a lot of people have looked into this problem. Um, one in particular approach is actually doing a um, genetic programming-based approach where you, um, where you form, form different architectures, um, try to run those networks to figure out the top 10 uh, best performing models, you mutate it slightly or you join them together and try to find, to run it again to see if you actually better models. So typically this approach is uh, pretty random and it takes a lot of GPU time to actually find out better models. Um, in differential ne network architecture search, instead of doing, uh, instead of doing um, genetic programming, um, we propose a way to actually search this space uh, using directly using the differential and uh, network architecture search. What this means is that we can actually create a so, uh, what that means is that we can create a stochastic supernet where each layer contains all these different um, different part sorry it's not working. So each uh, layer is actually um, each layer actually contains all the different blocks within your search space. And we use a method called Gumbel Softmax so that it can actually it can actually figure out which uh, building block to use. And when you train the network, um, it can decide which building blocks to use. For example, the distribution here it uh, points out to um, what actually what actually what actual architecture is used within each layer. So with this, you can build out build up a different type of layers. To just give an idea, um, on the top are six different configurations or basic architectures that we use to search for. Um, we search for different methods. Um, on the top four, or a top, actually the top um, top six are architectures that we search for. Um, you can actually make it also a hardware to ten dependent. Um, like the, uh, this one particular here, this is a search specifically for a Samsung S8, or you can just search architecture specifically for iPhone X. We create our search space so that it actually can contain different type of networks. For example, MobileNet v uh, 2 has an architecture that's shown below, whereas MSS has this other particular network. Using this approach, uh, we get a performance that's shown here. Um, it's much better off than uh, mobile net v2, and then also better than shuffle net v2, um, and a little better than MNAS net as well. And if you remember, uh, the MNAS net actually has a performance that's uh, almost similar to uh, the model adaptation framework. So um, this actually, because you're actually doing the architecture search, you have a little more space in finding better architectures. And one thing I mentioned is that uh, you can target devices um, you can find the best architecture for different devices. Um, shown here is the performance for iPhone X and Samsung 8. On the blue, on the blue bar is when you train for, you search for a model that's specifically for an iPhone X. It performs better on the iPhone X, but not on the Samsung S8. And um, if you train on the Samsung, train for the, you tar, train, if you search for the model for the Samsung S8, it works better on the S8 and not, not the iPhone X. So um, to recap a little bit, um, to do all model adaptation, there's, um, there's different goals that you would look into. Um, if you want a smaller size, a simple approach is to do pruning. You could do pruning, you could typically remove 60 to 70 percent of the redundant uh, weights. If you use weight train, you do a uh, chemist car string on the quantized weights, you use this representation, you can actually reduce um, the representation even further. You can even do more quantization um, uh, to re reduce it to even fewer bits. To get high accuracy, um, you could use dense sparse sense um, to try to figure out how you can actually get be better accuracy. Um, another thing I haven't talked about the solution today is that you can actually use a, a larger network to, um, 
to train a smaller network. This is a technique we call uh, distillation. To, this would help on um, increasing the accuracy of smaller models. And finally, uh, for faster speed, we talked a little bit about, about um, a latency aware uh, model design, which is um, adapting the model to um, target a device to improve speed. You can go to our automatic architecture search to find uh, better, better efficient models for uh, different devices. Um, you can also try um, the below two are things that we haven't talked about today. You can try to, uh, brand parallelizing all the network, getting better networks to try to see if you can actually um, uh, run things more in parallel to get uh, faster speed. And finally, you can also go with low precision networks, where the, this low, pre low precision means um, the precision of the weights and not the, the final results. Um, but typically, uh, low precision networks are, require some, some level of hardware, hardware support. Um, nowadays, I think um, uh, networks with uh, like three, bit, three bits can actually perform pretty well, pretty comparable to actually full, full precision networks. So um, I think this is the most, I, this is all the things I want to talk about uh, making models efficient. Lastly, I'll just show a quick demo of real-time post estimation. Um, the thing that you saw with butterflies is uh, the final effect. Uh, this is a demo of that actual case. Here was actually a mascara scene to go running on the device. This was running uh, this demo we did in 2017 actually. So this is running on the Samsung S9 or S. I think it's a sorry, Galaxy Galaxy S7 actually. This was running at 20 frames per second. Um, the information we get from the image is the bounding box of the person and the key points, which is the joints. Um, these are actually running frame by frame, so we are not actually using any time time information. So th the speed is actually pretty pretty fast. Um, the network itself uh, is is a master CNN network network that looks like this. Um, the it's a detection network where you transform the art, the input image to, into a smaller feature map, and then you have a region proposal network to figure out interesting points within the image. And then you do a cropping and resizing to a smaller map, and then use that to uh, infer a class and the, the refined bounding box. Once you have those, then you can then uh, get a larger map and do um, mask, uh, mask generation or like um, key point generation, which finds like the different key points. Um, shown here is, a, is a, another graph that actually points this out. You have a key point head, that uh, does uh, the, the, find, the find, finding the key, the key points and the segmentation head. Uh, the original network is actually pretty huge. Um, it actually doesn't perform as, as fast. What we did, this, did to actually speed it up is to, well, as we mentioned, reduce the number of layers inside the network, reduce the, the channel size, try to compress the model, uh, try to prune the model. Another thing that helps with actually making this uh, fast and runnable on a, a single device is that you um, use a smaller detection head. Uh, one of the things about uh, detection networks is that for each different uh, interesting parts of the image, it runs a detection <coughs> head. So if you find too much things, uh, this becomes too heavy to run on the device. So you reduce, you, you want to use a small detection head. And you limit yourself to some, some, only some set, a subset of the interesting points of the image. But of course, if you want high, st if you want high accuracy, uh, you still want to have high input resolution. With that, um, I, I thank you for your attention, and that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. 
And we're also hiring as well, so if you're interested, um, you can uh, use this email build up. If there are any questions, I can come around. If we have time for a couple of questions, and um, I can give you the mic. No questions. I, oh, a question in the back. Yeah. <coughs> I have like two questions. The first one about uh, you have this general ten five of your best networks, like you've selected the blocks. So there was like K, E, and G, I believe so, different types of the blocks on the slides, basically. Um, so uh, do you, like what kinds of, like this one, yeah. K, E, and G, I see, yeah. are those er architectures? What's yes. the difference, like? So um, I didn't go into the two. There's a lot of information in this. Um, this one is uh, actually available on Archive. What, what I'll mention here is uh, K is the kernel size. Uh, e is the expansion ratio. Um, this is using a virtual residual framework, also following the, the method that's inside uh, MobileNet. Uh, so for each architecture, it's actually doing um, one by one convolution to mix up information, and then just uh, depth wise convolution on, on, the, on the images. This helps with actually uh, reducing the computation. The kernel size is uh, the kernel size that's run in the middle. Expansion ratio is the, I think, um, I think the I think the channel size actually that that is expanded when you're doing the one by one convolution. Uh, the G on the other hand is actually the group group grouping that's used inside ShuffleNet. The to, to number of groups that's used. So if it's not if G is not sh shown, it's actually just G equals one. Okay, thank you. And the second question, like you talked about the quantization, do you mm -hmm. think that quantization should be used on the whole, like activation function through the whole? Network, or it's just maybe partially? Um, I'm not sure. That's actually a good question. I would like to know that question as well. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Sam, I got a question for you. Yeah. <clears throat> so I don't know if you've heard of a company called Exmo. So they were using uh, yes. you know, Bitcoin. Uh, yes. Yeah. So have you considered that kind of uh, reduced to a single bit? So that would be putting the low precision network right there. Yes. We haven't too, had too much experience with it, but we have been looking at it. Yes. I think it's a it's a farming direction, but as as I mentioned, it requires hardware hardware support. Yeah. Okay. Maybe one more question. Um, yeah, I also had a question about the uh, quantization. <laughs> um, you mentioned the was it value based quantization for activations? Yes. And there was this, like a certain cutoff point where if it's below, then you're only going to use three bits, and yes. if it's after that, you, you're going to use 32 bits. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so obviously the the higher values are much more important. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, how does a small difference in a high value, what kind of impact does it have that? you justify having this very precise, having 32 bits. For example, let's say the stupid value of looking at 400, and let's say it's 401. Uh, You're saying we can actually quantize to, quantize to, for example, this point, for example? Yeah. Um, no, I'm saying, what I'm asking is, um, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm wondering what the effect is um, if the activation value uh, would be slightly different than small changes in the activation value for, for higher activation. Oh. Well, again, uh, 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 for lower activation, you, you only keep have three bits, whereas for the higher ones, it's, it's very precise. Like, as if you are saying that very small changes in, 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 in that value would have, have a big impact. I think it's also because the, the way you go back and, and then improve the, and do the, the gradients, because you keep the higher values, um, uh, it keeps more information when you're propagating back, back, to the, back, to the, back to the network to update the weights. 
Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe Sam can stick around for more questions. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll take a few minutes between speakers, but uh, please join me again in thanking, thanking okay. Sam. Yeah.